Hi, uh, today we're going to do another tutorial on using databases and uh, data in an ASP.NET web application. Today's tutorial is going to focus on using data from tables in a database to populate drop-down lists. Uh, we're also going to look at what happens when you select a value from a drop-down list and want to use that in a WHERE clause to fill a grid view control. So the goal for today's uh, tutorial is to have two drop-down lists on our web page, one for selecting a country, another for selecting a position, and then based on the values selected in those two drop-down lists, we're going to populate a grid view with all the players in our soccer team's database uh, that meet those criteria. So to get started, I've already created a website. Uh, I've already added my soccer team's database to the app data folder of my project. And I've added a script manager and an update panel to the page so that we can use Ajax. Now, we're going to need two drop-down lists. So I'm going to drag one on the page from the standard control uh, toolbox one drop down list and when we do that uh, the the uh, menu pops up normally we would use edit items to go in and use the wizard to fill in all the list items for our drop down list but instead we're going to do uh, use the choose data source in order to connect to a database and populate this drop down list with the values that come out of a table in a database I'm also going to click enable postback so that when we click on items in here we can send a post back to the server to update the data that's shown in our data grid that we'll add in a few minutes so we'll choose data source uh, and we need to create a new data source since none have been created so far. So new data source. And since this is an Access 2007 database, uh, we're going to use the database source type, data source type, and we're going to create a new connection. So we want to change to a Microsoft Access database file. We want to find that file and it should open up by default to our app data folder. So there we go. We'll click that. Open and we'll test the connection and it was successful. We'll hit OK. Now we want to uh, update our web config and then we want to specify what data we want to pull. So we're going to use the country for this first uh, drop-down list. We're going to allow the user to select a country. So we're going to pull data out of the country table and I'm going to pull back everything. I'm going to pull back the ID and the country name. The country name in this table, remember, is United States, but the ID would be USA. And so we want both because we're going to use one to show in the drop-down list and the other one we'll use to pass around uh, when we make selections from the uh, in our select queries from the player table. So we'll hit next and test and you'll see so here the country name is it written out in text and the ID is the little code for each country. And we'll hit finish. And then here we just want to say what we want to show in the drop-down list and what we want to use as the value that we can pass around the selected value. So we'll do the drop-down list uh, to show we're going to use country name and then the value we'll leave it as that ID. So United States is what will show up in the list but then the ID for selected value would be USA. We'll hit OK and you'll see here if we run this real quick we've got a simple drop-down list and it's been populated with all the names it doesn't really do anything yet but it's been populated with all the names of the countries in the country table in our database so what that done is has done is effectively created what's called a data bound control where the data within this list control is bound is has been bounded to uh, data within our database okay so we're gonna go back in and we're gonna now add a second drop-down list and we're going to enable post auto post back on this one as well and we're going to choose a data source we're going to do a new one for this one since we want to pull from the uh, position table we'll do database the connection can be the same I think that was connection string 3 we'll hit next and in this time we want to choose the position table and again we're going to pull the ID and the position name so the position name would be for example midfielder and the ID would be MF or goalkeeper and GK okay so we'll hit next we'll test the query and you'll see the name and the ID we'll hit finish and again what we want to display in the drop-down list will be the position name the text but the, what we're going to use is the selected value is the ID we'll hit OK okay now if we run this we should have two drop-down lists, one with country names and one with position names. Okay, so let's go back. We'll stop and we'll save everything. And just make sure everything looks good. 
both of them are enabled auto postback and you'll notice they both say data bound now that means the values in that list are bound to a data source or the tables within our database now the last thing we're going to do is add a data grid to our page and we're going to basically put the grid view below and then this is where we're going to show players that match the criteria pick, uh, in these uh, drop down lists above so we'll, if someone picks United States and goalkeeper will show any goalkeepers from the United States in our player table down here so to do that we're going to again create another new data source since we're, now we're going to be pulling from a different table the player table we'll hit OK the connection string can be the same since it's just the connection to the database and we're going to pick the player table this time and I want to pull back everything from the player table now as it is this would just populate the data grid with everything from the player table but we only want to populate it with players that match the criteria from the two drop down lists so to do that we're going to use what's called a where clause so we have the select all from player but now we're going to add where clauses that say where the players country equals the value of the drop down list and where the players position equals the value of the second drop down list so we click where and what we're going to do is add the first where condition so we'll say where the player's nationality equals and now source is where we get that from so we're going to get that from a control and the control is the first drop down list and we'll add that and what this is basically saying is the player's nationality equals a parameter that is coming from the selected value of drop down list one so a selected value for example if we pick United States here that would be a value would be USA and so it would then look for matches of USA in the player table uh, so that it can limit the number of the re uh, uh, records returned to only those that are from USA now that's one condition now we also want to have a second condition on the position so we'll do player position equals and again another uh, this is also going to come from a control and it's going to come from drop down list two we'll add that and so now this says where the player's position equals the selected value in drop down list two so if I selected midfielder the selected value is MF and it would look in the player table and find players who have a position of MF so with these two together it's going to pull back only players where the country equals the country in this drop down list and the players position equals the position in this drop down list so we'll hit OK and we'll hit next now if I test the query it asks me to put in a value for country and a value for position so if I do ESP for Spain and I do MF for midfielders and hit OK then the results should be these three midfielders from Spain okay so we'll hit finish and now the last thing I'm going to do is update the auto format so I'll make it just look a little bit nicer and we'll pick slate and hit OK and uh, we can always go in and update the column names and other stuff but I'm just going to leave it for the sake of this tutorial as is and we'll run the page now when this opens up you'll see it opened up we by default United States and goalkeeper were selected so it's showing our one goalkeeper in the database from the USA which is Tim Howard of Everton now if I change this to, for example to England goalkeeper you'll notice that when I selected in here since auto postback was enabled it automatically updated so Joe Hart is an English goalkeeper if I do midfielder and leave England as it is it updates and shows Steven Gerrard and Gareth Barry if I do Spain and midfielder it updates there to uh, the three from Spain so we can play around with this and look at all the different uh, players in the database but what's going on here just the key points is that we're filling these drop down lists with data from tables in the database there are no midfielders from the US uh, and we are we gotta find a Netherlands midfielder or defender John Hatinga. So it's filling the properties or the values of this drop down list from the country table. It's filling this uh, position uh, drop down list with values from the position table. And then it's using these two selections as a where clause, as where clauses in filling this uh, data grid control to show you the players that match the criteria up above. So there you go. It's a pretty quick tutorial on how to use. Um, drop down lists that are bound to database tables and then use where clauses based on values from controls to populate a grid view. I uh, hope that was helpful. This video was made using the open source uh, software Cam Studio to record what I'm doing on my computer today. Thanks for watching.